Hey guys, Ollie here from Local Knowledge, and today I'm going to show you the easiest way to make a wind on leader that I've found over my many years of doing this. First thing, why would you want to use a wind on leader? And the answer to that's simple it gives you a 100% knotless connection in heavier line. How does a wind on work? You probably remember as a kid, right? The Chinese finger cuff, the woven thing, you pull it, it got so tight you couldn't get your fingers out, you push it back together. Well, the braid is the finger cuff, the line is your finger. You put the line, the leader material inside of the braid and the natural uh, weave of the braid will cinch down and grab it. You honestly don't need a serve except for in a slack line condition. You would not want the fish to turn and run to you, get some slack in the line, have it pop up a little bit, then potentially your leader could fall out. And that's why you're using the serve to connect everything together. I got some Seaguar Premier, 100 pound. I'm gonna need some Seaguar thread lock. This is 130 pound. As far as the braid and matching it to the appropriate leader material, you wanna get it as close as you can in terms of fit. And you'll see here shortly. If you use braid that's too big, with a, with a smaller, like if I was using 200 pound braid and 100 pound um, floral, the Chinese finger cuff is not going to work as tight and you have the potential of something slipping loose. As a rule, you're going to want to match size for size. So if you had 100 pound floral, you're going to want to use 100 or slightly bigger, which in this case is 130 pound. So I got my leader material, I've got my braid, you're going to want to have a pair of scissors handy, and then these are really the stars of the show. And what these are, these are splicing needles. And the company that makes them is called Deho. There's a bunch of other brands out there. So for this project, we really only need two needles and they're two different styles. The first one we're gonna use is a hollow piece of surgical stainless steel tubing so it won't rust. And then if you could see that, it's got a bullet point on it. The reason you want the bullet point is because this is gonna go through the middle of that braid and you want a nice smooth silky thing to pass through and hold the leader, which typically has a rough edge. The other needle we're gonna use too, this is called a latch needle, and it's got a little tiny hook at the end with a latch that covers it. And what you use this needle for is for pulling this braid back through itself. When I start these, it's very scientific. I usually like to start off with about six feet of line. The first step that I always do is I make a loop. And in order to form a loop in hollow braid, you need to have a section of line that's about two feet long to start with. I have a mark here on my vise that shows what's 12 inches. So I just measure off 12 inches. I go like this and I just put a little uh, kink in the braid. And then I come up the line to essentially what would have been about two feet away from the tag end of the line. And this is the tricky part that will frustrate most guys getting started. This braid is hollow. It's a uh, Seaguar's thread lock, and the reason I like it is it's got a couple of extra carriers of the braided material, and it really makes it easy to get a needle in, which once you start doing this, you'll really learn to appreciate. So what I've done now is I've inserted my needle two feet in, and it's going towards my tag end. I'm gonna bunch up a bunch of hollow leader on here, right? And then I was telling you about the latch. I'm gonna open up my little latch. I'm gonna put the main line behind it in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pile up as much material in this needle as I can. When I get to the mark I made that is one foot from the end, I'm gonna go ahead and push the needle back out of the braid. Now you can see I've got the main line is latched in here. I've got the needle coming through out of the side of the braid and I've basically gone back into the braid for a 12 inch section. Now that that's done is I'm going to basically turn this braid back inside out on itself. And I pull it over the latch and I'm just going to continue rolling it down and rolling it over. And what this will do eventually is form a loop. Just keep smoothing it back over itself. And now if you can see, I took that material, I turned it inside out and now I've got a loop at this end, right? And on this end, I've got my tag end. I'm gonna make this loop a little bit bigger before I go ahead and finish it. I wanna have something about the size I can stick my hand through, ideally. And now I can adjust the loop size by pulling up more slack. So about that size on the loop is what I like. I'm gonna smooth everything down again. Now I've got this extra piece of material, right? And what this is gonna do is it's gonna jump out of the braid and it's gonna jump right back in about a half inch 
down past where this connection ends, the base of my loop. So in order to do that, once again, I'm just gonna kind of push the braid together about a half inch from the end, right? You'll see it'll flatten out and get kind of thick. I'm gonna start feeding my needle in. I'm gonna take the end of that tagline material that we made when we formed the loop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that tag end into the main line again. And what that's gonna do is give me kind of a double finger cuff of security. I've got the line going basically in on top of itself to form the loop, trapping it. And then what this is going to do is just trap it yet again. I only trust a couple of people to make a wind on if it's not my own. It's just attention to detail. There's really nothing hard about it. It's just taking the time to do it right. Now you can see I passed that, I fed that tag in through. Now when I grab this and I start pushing the braid back down, what's going to happen? Tag end's gone. Now I've got this super crispy, clean loop in my line. There's a little spot right here where that tag line jumped out and then jumped back in, and then it goes back in, and you can kind of see where it terminates right here where the line goes from like double thickness to single thickness. That's it, man. That thing is smooth as silk and will go through your guides like a dream. Okay, so now I've got my loop made. That's really half the battle. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff my floral leader material up inside this needle. And what I'm gonna do from this tag end, well, you gotta leave yourself a little bit more line when you make your, when you do your braid side. I'd start with about nine feet, eight feet. I wanna get about 18 inches of this tag line hanging off. So I'm gonna come back up the line about 18 inches. And instead of inserting my line in the end of the braid, I'm gonna insert it in here. And you can see I've come up just like we have before. I, this needle's a little bit bigger, but it goes through like butter in this 130 pound. And I'm gonna go ahead and just keep feeding this until I get to the base of where I made that loop connection. So it's usually a couple of feet inside of there. I've heard you can go with as little as like six inches. I'm not here to roll those dice. Braid's cheap and it makes me feel better. And that's what a lot of this stuff comes down to. It's just confidence, man. I can buy these right off the shelf, but I don't know if that person had a bad day, used the right material, missized something. And when you think about how much time, effort, and not the least of which money goes into catching some of these big fish, you know, you're gonna burn $1,000 worth of fuel, yada, yada, yada. It's just not something that I'm gonna leave to chance. And honestly, once I get a good hook set in a fish, this is the last thing that I worry about. So now I pulled it all the way up to that joint where the uh, braid goes back into itself when we formed the loop earlier, right? Remember that? I'm gonna go ahead and pull this needle through and it's gonna, with it, it's gonna bring the leader material, right? I'm gonna remove the leader material from the leader because I don't need, or from the needle, I'm sorry, I don't need it anymore. I am gonna go ahead and then just tuck this back inside the braid and smooth the braid over it. Now you see this little tiny gap? That's my fluorocarbon and that thicker material is my doubled up braid from forming a loop. Now I'm gonna pinch it here and I'm just gonna smooth this braid all the way down onto the fluoro, okay? And dude, honestly, we're pretty much done at that point. So loop, fluoro, here's your connection. And now I'm gonna show you how to serve this in a way that I hadn't seen until recently, which saves a bunch of time. Now this device here, all it's designed to do is hold line under tension. You wanna cinch these down pretty tight and get as much tension on that line as you can. So now if you remember, the last step that we have to do is basically make a connection here that's gonna make sure, if you look, at, look right now, if I just push on this line, it slides up and down, right? That's not good. Like if a fish is pulling on it with tension, it'll never come loose but the tension lets off, whatever, you gotta slack off because you got wrapped in the prop. We just don't wanna have a slack situation cause this to come loose. Okay, so this is normally where I would break out this tool. I would come over here, I would tie off a knot, and then I would spin this all the way down the line. And it works awesome. It is a little time consuming. The serve is usually the longest part of this process, but with this method I'm gonna show you, you don't need that tool, which this is 80 bucks and you gotta have braid to fill it. 
what this this other trick is is basically I'm just going to tie half hitches. So if you don't know what a half hitch is, it's an overhand knot. If you can tie your shoes, you got this one in your repertoire. So the first couple of half hitches, I'm really going to lock down tight so everything doesn't start sliding. And I'm just going to go like this. And the only thing you got to remember here is make your hitches the same way. In other words, if you're coming up from underneath, go up from underneath. If you were going over the top, just do them the same. Another thing that I do is I just throw a little bit of glue down along the way okay and i'm just going to keep making hitches now you could probably just do a dozen on this they're really quick and in the end it looks really clean okay now once you tie it you'll get this little worm that spins around the line okay so now once we get to here we need to finish it and by finish it i mean we need to lock it in place so again i'm going to throw a little bit of glue and then I'm going to do the regular half hitch, except I'm going to do it twice, which I guess is a full hitch. And then the trick here to finish it is going to be, once you have that done, you're going to want to unwind the twist that you made. And what that's going to do is it's going to bury your tag end two twists up the serve. Now you can see the tag end is exiting. It's not at the end of the line. It's actually inside the wraps a little bit. Trim it off as tight as you like. Final step is take everything on the knot, around the knot, and I'm just gonna kinda get it all gooped up nice with super glue. So there's your serve. You're good to go. Now I'm gonna take everything out of the vise, and then I usually use a 30 foot, 25, 30 foot leader for tuna fishing. I'm six feet tall, my wingspan's about six feet. Two, three, oh. Looks like we're getting a 15 or a 20 today. Hope you've liked this video. If you like this video and you want to see others like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we appreciate your time.